Some tales are about witches and monstrosities. Some are about noble knights in shining armor. But not this one. They've taken everything from me. Now, I will have it back! Queen Meave of Lyria and Rivia. Born into the royal family of Lyria, Meave seemed everything except the typical noblewoman. Instead of knitting, playing the harp, and reading romance novels, she instead preferred to climb trees, to spar with the brothers using wooden swords, and to read memoirs of decorated generals. She was the heir to Lyria. However, even though she therefore had land, not many men of noble birth were willing to ask for her hand. She was covered in bruises, her knees were scratched, which was very unlike what was expected of a noble woman, especially a future queen. There however was one who claimed her hand, King Reginald of Rivia, also known as the Courageous. He wasn't the brightest king. However, instead of trying to change Meave's behavior, he fell in love with her for who she was. Meave, however, took more convincing to start getting feelings for Reginald. Out of desperation, Reginald sought advice from noble ladies of the court on how to gain Meave's affection. However, their advice proved useless. Without saying a thing, she discarded the finest of fairy tapestries, flung sapphire studded necklaces out of the window, and smashed a Kaviri lute against her chamber floor. After a while, Reginald found a gift that gained him Meave's affection, a suit of exquisite gilded plate armor. They got two sons. The oldest, Willem, was born in 1251, the youngest, Ansais, sometime after him. During the years together, Meave ruled Lyria and Privia by Reginald's sides. However, during long winter evenings, she made sure everyone in Rivia Castle knew that she was the one in control of the kingdom and not her husband. And he respected her as his queen and co-ruler. However, as often happens, the king started having affairs with a lot of different women. He eventually died in 1259. Upon his death, the Regency Council ruled Willem was still too young to rule and therefore they let Meave keep the throne. They thought, because she was a widowed woman, that they would be able to control her. However, they were mistaken. Before the mourning period of Reginald had ended, enemies of Lyria and Rivia had invaded Rivia. However, they were surprised by what they found. Instead of an easy to conquer land, they found Meave standing at the ready with an army. Before the winter arrived, she had defeated all of her enemies, earning the respect of not only her own kingdom, but the neighboring ones as well. This victory wasn't without some problems. Some generals refused to listen to her commands, so she had to make a few heads roll before everyone started listening to her. Meave is said to have keen insight, breathtaking beauty and unrivaled bravery. However, like any person, she has her flaws. Her greatest flaw was her incapability to grasp the nature of human weakness. She started measuring others by her own impossible standards. She quickly bonded with like-minded people, however, those who were more sensitive were held in disfavor by her. This included her sons, the eldest, Willem, especially. Out of all the things that people can do wrong, there was one thing she hated the most, betrayal. 
if any one of her advisors betrayed her, she was quick to send them away. Most of the time, permanently. A few years after her husband's passing, the Northern War started. During the First Northern War, her involvement is unknown. However, she along with the four other major Northern Monarchs met at Hague, where they discussed what to do about the threat of Nilfgaard at the Aruga. She came to the conclusion that they shouldn't sit still, and instead should do something, because if they waited too long, Nilfgaard would grow too powerful for them to handle once again. As the topic went on to Sintra and Siri, many of the kings were afraid that the emir would find her and marry her, resulting in Nilfgaard's rightful rule over Sintra. Therefore, the kings wanted to have Siri killed to prevent this. Meath, however, was against this, and instead, if they found a girl, that they sent Siri to her. She wanted to place Siri in a castle in the mountains and marry her off to one of her knights, saying that after a few years, once they will see her again, that she would have two children and a third on the way at least. Nilfgaard, however, was aware of the secret council, and they knew what the monarchs were planning. Around here is where some of the sources from the games and books start to conflict a bit. In the books, it is said that Meath and Demavent started some trouble at the Nilfgaardian border at Dol Angra. In Thronebreaker, however, it is Nilfgaard who attacked first. What could possibly have happened is that Meath and Demavent were thinking about starting conflict, and before they were able, Nilfgaard already did the opposite and made it look like the visitors to the north who started it. The year 1267. War hung in the air, it sent palpable. The mighty empire of Nilfgaard stood poised, greedily eyeing the northern realms just across the Yaruga. In light of the threat, the realm sovereigns met in summit. They made declarations, pledged fraternal assistance, forged alliances, and then, in good spirits, dispersed. Among them, Meave, queen of the twin realms Lyria and Rivia. Know the name? Heard her beauty extolled? <laughs> Justly so. Remarkable she was. Not for her graceful exterior, but for her persistence and courage. Where was I? Ah. As the queen and her retinue neared her capital, Count Caldwell appeared. In Meave's absence, the Count was to have helped her son, the youthful Prince Willem, run the Twin Kingdoms. While Meave was returning from the meeting, she had to deal with some trouble, caused by a local group of bandits roaming her land. They were called the Strays of Spala, and were led by the Duke of Dogs, Gascon Brossard. She eventually dealt with them, and took them as prisoners to Lyria, to sentence them. However, unbeknownst to her, Nilfgaard had attacked her kingdom. She fought them at Dravagat and won. However, her victory didn't last long. Upon arriving in Lyria, she met with the council, and before she knew, she was locked up in a tower, and her eldest son, Willem, was the new king. Caldwell was the mastermind behind the plan to surrender to Nilfgaard and put Willem on the throne, since he was easy to manipulate made a deal with the Nilfgaardian general, Ardal Abdahi, who led the army group east during the Second Northern War. Meath managed to escape her imprisonment, with the help of her trusted advisor and friend, Reynard Odo, and Gascon Brossard, who she wanted to have hanged just the day before. They gathered all the men they could get, and went to Adern, where they fought Nilfgaard once more. At Aldersburg, Meef tried to get more soldiers to use in a fight against Nilfgaard from Demavent. However, he himself didn't want to keep fighting, and instead fled to the Redanian court. He told his men that if they want to keep fighting, they could join Meef's army. He however provided Meef with the gift he received from Bruver Hook after the prevent the massacre some years ago. With this gift, she went on to Mahakam to talk to Bruver Hook. He didn't want to get involved in the war, 
but eventually provided Meath with a number of dwarves for a guerrilla army after Scoia'tael attacked him. Around this time, Meath learned that Count Caldwell, who had betrayed her, was stationed in Angren, and therefore she decided to go there and kill him. Angren, however, destroyed the morale of her soldiers, until they at last finally found Caldwell. Once Meath confronted him, he told her that she was trapped and that the Nilfgaardian army was coming into Angren to finish her off. She threw him out of the window to his death. She and her troops, however, had no time to celebrate. They had to flee Angren right away as fast as they could. On their way out, they had to go through Isgith, where they had to deal with Gynikora, the queen of Isgith was a powerful monster capable of controlling other monsters and beasts. After a long time in the swamp, they managed to get out. However, they had to cross the bridge, and Nilfgaard was on the opposite side, ready to attack. Meath was unsure whether or not they would win, however, she preferred to die fighting than to die by being hanged like a criminal. As she charged, something unexpected happened. A white-haired witcher, another man, joined the battle and guided her troops to victory. During the fighting, Meath was injured and got a scar on her cheek, as well as that she lost a few teeth. She honored Geralt right after the battle by giving him his famous title of Rivia, which he'd already been using for years. However, after a few days, Geralt and his group left Meath's army. Meath considered them deserters and wanted men. However, she had no time to try and find Geralt, she had a war to fight. The Northern Realms seemed to lose most fights against Nilfgaard, and most of them were on the point of surrendering to Amir. However, Meath's victory on the bridge showed the other monarchs that they still had a chance to win. And soon after, the counter-offensive started. Meath invaded her own lands to take back her crown freeing her people from the Nilfgaardians. However, she had one problem. Ardal Abdahi had used Rivia Castle as his base of operations in his conquest on the east side. She prepared for a siege. However, Nilfgaard was said to soon have more troops arrive to aid those who were in the castle. This made it so that Meath couldn't hold the siege for long. She had to deal with it in a different way. And thus, she sent a few soldiers to go by boat towards a hidden dock next to the castle to open the gate and let her army in. This was successful, however, it had its cost. On that day, Meath lost the person close to her. Depending on choices made in Thronebreaker, it could be either Reynard Odo, Gascon Brossard, or her own son, Willem. She wanted to take her vengeance on the man that had taken her kingdom. However, he fled in a wicker basket to shore and took the remaining parts of his army towards Aldersburg in Adern. Here, he was prepared to keep fighting on. However, he suddenly died by poisoning. Just before these events, Menno Kuhorn had been defeated and Joachim de Wet had fled back to Sintra. Nilfgaard and the northern kingdoms had enough of the war and they settled for truce on the 2nd of April 1268 in Sintra. Meath was also present when they were talking and discussing the conditions of the surrender. While in Sintra she thought about what happened there five years ago with the death of Calante, with whom she was friends and very close. At some point during the negotiation of the topic of Sintra came along and the monarchs were informed about Emir's marriage to Cyrilla. Out of all the monarchs present, only two had their doubts about the girl. Esterod Thyssen and Meave. Esterod saw the real Ciri in his dreams, but he decided not to tell anyone and instead to only share it with his wife. Meave, on the other hand, was very familiar with the former Centurion monarchs. She remembered Calanthe, Rukner and Pavetta and the image of Cyrilla didn't look like any of them. However, for reasons of state and history, she kept her mouth shut 
and didn't tell anyone the truth. Sometime after this, Meath along with the other northern monarchs went to Novigrad, where a victory parade was being held. She pointed out to the other kings that they hadn't divided the spoils of war enough, and that people were angry. The volunteer army was standing before the kings and Helmfart, and all showed them the middle fingers as a way to show their feelings towards them. For the following years, Meath continued her rule over her kingdoms still cursing Geralt's name whenever she heard it. However, it is unknown what had happened to her during the Third Northern War. But it seems like she managed to keep her kingdoms. As she is still queen of Rivia and Lyria in The Witcher 3 during Blood and Wine, which takes place a few years after the Third Northern War. Most likely, her kingdoms became a vassal state to whichever side won the Third Northern War. Many years after the Second Northern War, she still kept a superbly stocked armory containing all the weapons she had gained during her war, like elven blades, specially cast hawker flails, and her most prized swords, a Mahakam Sihil, which she had dubbed Sharp Bastard. When asked about the name of the sword, the memories came back to her, the good ones and the somber ones, of those who she had lost. Meath was, and still is, a ruler above everything else, and a much respected one above that. That was everything about Meath, however, before I end this video, I want to talk about a shot from the Netflix Witcher trailer, which is related to Meath's kingdom, Lyria. In one shot, you can see the carts, or the wagon, with the dead bodies all around, as well as some Lyrian shields. In this scene from the trailer, we can see two people exiting the wagon. One of them being Yennefer. The other one is a woman who is named Kalis, who is an original character from the show. She is noted as to be the queen of Lyria at some point in the past. This queen is listed on the Witcher wiki as Meath's mother. And looking at the possible timeline, that could be possible, considering Jennifer's age. And considering the timeline, it could be possible for Jennifer to at some point uh, already be working as a mage while Meave's mother was still ruling. She is said to appear in an episode that was focused on what seems like Jennifer trying to deal with her infertility by protecting a queen and her baby. It is rumored that this episode is about a mage hunting for the baby because the baby could have the curse of the black sun. As Meath is said to be her daughter and the curse of the black sun only affects women, the show might have it so that Meath could be cursed with the black sun. This all seems a bit far-fetched concerning Meath, however I thought it was worthy of being included in a video. Uh, the source for the article from the Redania Intelligence will be included. That was it for this video. This is probably my longest video till date. Uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Collecting all the information about me from five books and an entire game focused around her took some time. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. Till the next video. Bye. We've myriad matters to resolve, so I trust you're well rested. Whatever the case, I've no doubt we shall meet the dawn before we're done. Firstly, we must ask assistance. Pen a letter to King Demavend. Scribe, take this down. Dear... What? Uncle? Cousin? Blast. Again. I, Meave, by the God's grace, Sovereign of Rivia and... Your grace? Mother? The peers and I, we've come to propose another solution. Yes, out with it. We wish to acknowledge Nilfgaard's authority, pledge fealty to the Emperor. I beg your pardon. The black clad hordes outnumber our forces manyfold, and they're far better equipped. We stand not the slightest chance against them in open. You will not lecture me about Nilfgaard's army, my son. All you know of them you garnered from coloured renderings. Whereas I faced them at Dravagrad. I faced them and crushed them. 
But your grace, the losses. For this fleeting victory in which you delight, how many of your subjects had to perish? Bend a knee afore the Emperor, and you shall spare thousand. Nay, never. Understood, Caldwell. Not ever. I'd hoped to persuade you, but it seems I've failed. Nonetheless, the die's been cast. We've signed the accord with Nilfgaard. Our noble lord stand with me. The blood left Meave's face. She had realized her son, who had ever professed to detest politics and shirked his duties as crown prince, had just stabbed her in the back, as had her entire court. What is this? Treason to my eyes. The gallows is what awaits you. Willem rules Lyria now. And should you not acquiesce and approve the accord, I fear only you, milady, shall have the pleasure to meet the hangman. Don't get ahead of yourself, Caldwell. My mother will not be harmed. Not one hair on her head. Understood? Confine the queen to the tower. You err deeply, my son. <laughs> <laughs>